a lady takes out time from her busy schedule to grab a coffee and relax for a bit. She goes to a coffee shop where the man at the counter is waiting to take her order. One coffee please, she says. Sure ma'am, would you like a cappuccino, cafe latte, cafe mocha or espresso? A cappuccino? Oh no, maybe a latte. Actually, one latte please. Perfect, says the man. Would you like a single shot or a double? Uh, make it a double shot. Would you like it with whipped cream or without? Without, says the lady now getting impatient. Do you want to add sugar? Yes. White or brown? Brown, says the lady rolling her eyes. Do you want it with skim milk, low fat milk or almond milk? The lady getting edgy by then says, oh, I just want a good coffee, regular milk. The man again asks, do you want to add any flavours like hazelnut, caramel, vanilla or Irish? The lady's head almost spinning by then. Actually, I don't want a coffee. Just get me a glass of water please. Sure ma'am, would you like still sparkling or tap water? Well, I don't know what the lady did then, but the man surely did his job well. It is nice to have a choice, but having too much to choose from is just driving us crazy. As a nation, we are quite literally spoiled for choice. Everywhere we turn, there is a mind-boggling parade of choices offering everything from movies, clothes, gadgets, holiday and entertainment. Spending time thinking about big decisions or big ticket items still makes sense, but there just isn't time to stand at the snack machine and list out the pros and cons of Lay's versus Kettle's. And then, after finally picking one, you are still thinking of the other brand of chips while standing at the checkout counter. And while eating it, instead of relishing the flavour, you are thinking, maybe the kettle would have been more fun. It's more like we've never stopped making decisions. And then we totally forget to enjoy the choices we get, because there's another one coming just behind. Having options is a good thing. Well, most of the times, it means you do not have to get stuck with a mediocre TV serial or commit to just one type of sport. Without variety, life would be way too dull and predictable. But there's still such a thing as having too many choices. Having too many good options means it is incredibly hard to make a decision. The generation of today is having fun experiencing so much novelty like no other generation has ever experienced before. But the more choices you have to choose from, the less satisfied you are with any given option. We can easily say that we are suffering from a paradox. A generation that loves choices but hates choosing. Decision fatigue is a real thing. I'm sure many of you have had this experience. It's late in the evening and you're browsing through Netflix, looking for something to watch. You scroll through different titles, you even read a few reviews. But you can't just commit to watching any given movie. Suddenly, it's 30 minutes up and you're still stuck in an infinite browsing mode. So you just give up. You are too tired to watch anything. So you cut your losses and fall asleep. Our brains just can't make their best decision when we are overwhelmed. That low mental energy leads to impulsive buying and poorly thought out decisions. I've come to believe that this is the defining characteristic of our generation. Let us call it keeping our options open. We never want to commit to one place, one community or one identity. But how are you expected to know what you want when everything seems great? Having too many choices is like walking through a hallway with a lot of open doors. But nobody wants to enter one door and get stuck behind it. But the people who inspire me the most are the people who have left the hallway, shut the door behind them and settled in. It is the people who can wholeheartedly commit to one thing and work towards it and believe in it. It is the everyday boredom, distraction and uncertainty that is eroding our ability to commit to one thing. We believe that we need to keep our options open to the multiple choices we have. 
But I believe that the most radical act we can do is to make a commitment to a particular thing or a particular cause or maybe to a particular person. To show our love for something by working at it for a long time and to close the doors and forego options. Because ultimately we have only two choices, our commitments versus our fears. Thank you.